Hello, fans, friends, and followers. I'm glad to see you back here again. I have a, uh, a shorter uh, presentation, Artist Talk, today. I'm going to be covering images from the Oceana collection. Uh, it's a subset of my larger Surreality collection. Uh, these are all visible on my website. And uh, if anyone would like to own one of these, these are produced at a 20 inch by 30 inch uh, print on metallic paper face mounted to acrylic and uh, provides a really bright, colorful presentation, a lot of reflective light coming out of it. Almost looks like, uh, like, a, like a TV screen as far as the color and the brightness that comes out of it. So if you're interested, uh, you know, take a, take a walk on my website and uh, order it and we'll get it out to you. In the meantime, let me get started. Everyone's ready to go. I'm going to start this uh, presentation by explaining a little bit about this collection, how it got started. It's uh, kind of been an evolution from some of my more painterly photographs that I had done prior to uh, stretching the reality into surreality. The, uh, we first, I first got started doing a lot of this um, style of post-processing back um, uh, when I first moved to Miami and I took a walk along Miami Beach. I really loved the Art Deco architecture, uh, the neon lights at night, and uh, certainly it's a uh, movie set just waiting to be shot. Most of the time, however, there are cars parked all along Ocean, uh, Ocean Drive, and there's a lot of traffic, usually bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic as people cruise the Strip. But once a year, on uh, usually it's in, J in January, sometimes maybe early February, when uh, they have the Art Deco weekend, they close Ocean Drive off to all traffic, and on the ocean side, uh, they allow people to put up tents and celebrate everything Art Deco, from clothing to artwork, uh, you name it, it's out there. And uh, this night was a night, it was quite chilly, and uh, there was quite a bit of wind blowing off the ocean, which you can see from the blowing palm trees. And I took a walk all the way down Ocean Drive, photographing the architecture of each of the hotels and buildings. One of the tough things about photographing the uh, Art Deco architecture on Ocean Drive is that there's very room, very little room to stand back. So you have to shoot with a wide angle lens and you're shooting from a low perspective, which tends to give all the images this keystoning effect, like they're falling over. And uh, once I get back into the digital darkroom, I'm able to correct that, make them stand up properly and, and give it a much more natural look as if it was shot uh, more at a distance and, and a little bit more elevation. This, uh, this photograph here is of the Beacon Hotel, and I really like it. It captures a little bit of the stage of uh, Miami Beach and certainly the, the colors and the mood. I do, I do like the sky that's up there and uh, certainly a little bit of play in the streets. Being that there's uh, not really any vehicles, there's a few of these, um, uh, I guess, security vehicles that are around. You can still get the feel that it is modern day, but uh, it does it does give you a look at the architecture and a look at the, the setting on Miami Beach that you're not going to get uh, just about any other night of the year, day of the year that you go by there. And the pictures that I shot for this group, I had published and uh, printed up and uh, um, made available. And uh, people liked them, but I didn't feel they stood out uniquely enough for, for the type of work I wanted to do. So later on, I decided to take a lot of these and rework them into, into something surreal. And I'll tell you how that first began. Um, when I was in Morocco, I, I came across this building and uh, I loved the distorted, distressed plaster look on it. And it kind of called out to me as something from a Dali landscape, but um, it wasn't quite there. So I, when I photographed this, I brought it back into the darkroom and I struggled with it doing just the 
typical painterly effects like you'd seen in the previous shot. And it just quite didn't do what I what I had wanted to do from a surreal perspective. I wanted it to look more Dali-esque. And um, so eventually I started melting it with Photoshop. I grabbed the uh, pieces of the of the plaster and, and the landscape and stretched and pulled it and twirled it and uh, painted this out. And, and then I replaced the sky with something that's a little bit more uh, Van Gogh-ish. And um, I really liked this. I liked the effect it had. And and other people really liked it also. And they encouraged me to, you know, to push myself to try some other things. And that's when I went back and started visiting the uh, images of the, um, of the uh, Ocean Drive. And that was, the, that was the beginnings. So some of the, some of the images I came up with, this is probably one of the most popular that I have. It's of the Versace mansion. And um, it kind of captures, I think, the spirit of, of Versace. I've called this Versace Dreams. And again, it's a 20 inch by 30 inch um, um, work of art. These skies are very uh, much a, uh, I guess you'd call them a Van Gogh-esque uh, type of sky with the twirling um, you know, with the twirls in the sky. And you've also added uh, other stars and galaxies up there to kind of add to the atmosphere. And uh, this is this has really been kind of made very whimsical. Um, you know, Versace was a very creative person. He had just an enormous, uh, an enormous um, sense of, of creativity. And even though he was assassinated on the steps, here. I feel that his spirit kind of lives on, and that's maybe uh, the symbolism of that glowing orb in the middle is that's kind of his spirit living on. But in the, uh, in the front, in the foreground, we see what I, what I perceived as a uh, foretelling of the story of Versace. There's this small, frail man right out in front, and then there's this big uh, kind of bruiser guy standing next to him with two people standing and looking on. It's almost an anticipation of something tragic to happen. And you see other people kind of walking through the ghosts, you know, ghosted a little bit from, from their motion. And to me, this is kind of like a, a snapshot between reality and surreality. Uh, we, we know what happened to Versace. It was very tragic, but yet in this image, his, his spirit lives on. And uh, uh, a lot of people really like this. I've seen this hanging in people's houses and, and it really uh, adds to a, a very, interesting and slightly whimsical feel for this uh, for this beautiful building on Ocean Drive. Some of the other uh, places along Ocean Drive also have very interesting Art Deco architecture. And for me, the, the geometry of the Art Deco architecture just calls out and begs me to do something to make it less structured, to kind of melt it, twirl it around a bit, and liquefy it a bit, just turn into into kind of like something from underwater. And that's what a lot of these uh, images do. You'll notice the figures in these images are um, also whimsical. I, they usually have larger heads and smaller frame bodies. The, the proportions of the body are a little bit changed. And whenever there's a face, the face is enlarged and blown up to give it, uh, a, you know, quite a bit of almost a cartoonish effect. And again, the, the idea here is it's beautiful to look at, um, but it is whimsical, it's playful, it's kind of light, uh, not, not too heavy, not too heavy. This scene here uh, is like right out of The Godfather. Um, you've got this antique vehicle that's been parked in front of the Park Central Hotel for years. And in the driver's seat is a dummy of... Uh, of a gangster. And in front of the building, you see what's evidently a security guard or some other uh, character. It looks like there's just a hit or something ready to happen. And, uh, you know, so, so you've got this uniqueness and this, this uh, absence of anything that places it in a time other than the moment of, of the Godfather, which is uh, identified by the vehicle, the age of the vehicle, the make of the vehicle, the style. And, uh, of course, the colors are just bright. They're energizing and uh, 
uh, the motion in here is, is amazing. This is uh, the same scene, but it's pulled back a bit. And uh, I call this termination at Park Central because this really looks like the scene for a hit. You've got the guy out front. Uh, and I'll zoom in here a little bit for you all. You've got this guy out front. Uh, it's kind of a dark figure. You've got the gangster in the car. And over here on the other side of this image, you've got what appears to be a guy with his hands up and something that's about to happen or, or maybe did happen. Um, the building, interestingly enough, only has one light on. Only this one window is lit up. And it's also out here, uh, this, this one window is the only one that's open. You'll notice there's this uh, sprite or something inside the window, and that's part of my we are not alone in the universe uh, concept for almost all of my surreality works. I place these sprites and stars inside buildings, inside dark areas, as if someone's looking out there and watching us. Uh, up here, there's another star that's placed, again, symbolizing the we are not alone concept. But this uh, here, with all the stars in the sky and the swirling skies brings in the feelings of, of, of uh, Salvador Dali and also the uh, feelings of uh, Van Gogh when Van Gogh's starry skies. And uh, of course, Dali was famous for the way he melted and twisted and pulled things like the uh, edges of this building. This next scene is uh, called Extraordinary Rendition at McAlpine. And here we're kind of making um, an implication that someone has been uh, um, renditioned out off of the planet. You see down here, there's like a spot in the ground that maybe someone was standing and it kind of mimics this, this uh, meteor up here where it would appear that uh, something has been uh, applying a force to pull someone up from, from the planet. And we have, again, we have these uh, little star lights that are inside the building, kind of in indicating that there might be some type of uh, extraterrestrial life form that's sharing this space with us. And uh, again, we leave it up to the imagination what is really happening here at McAlpine. I really uh, liked this one. We have a slightly different color palette. It's a, a calming, relaxing set of greens and golds and yellows and oranges. Um, the thing that kind of fascinated me about when I made this picture is that the people were just so still that during this long exposure, they really didn't move. They hardly moved at all. And you can see you can see the waiter behind this woman is a ghost, but she's like almost not moving at all. And I saw this, um, and again, this this gentleman over here, he's looking at the menu. But you can see that it's like all these people are frozen in time, and uh, they're looking on their cell phone, they're playing on social media. So I call this one sleeper cell because it's like, you know, they're on their cell phone, they're asleep, but also, they maybe are uh, cells of an agent from space. And uh, you'll see that in these, in these uh, lamps over here, we've kind of made them like cubicle eggs that could be housing uh, the extraterrestrials, uh, waiting, waiting for them to launch. So this, and again, this is uh, uh, an interesting portrayal of the building, the architecture, uh, the space and um, the color palette is all very interesting. Uh, here we have the Waldorf Towers. I make a play on the, uh, on the famous hotel, the Waldorf Astoria, by calling this the Waldorf Hysteria. And uh, you'll see that out in front, we have a lot of different people. Um, and all of their facial features have been distorted, giving them 
some type of an alien feel to them, something a little bit more humanoid, but not human at all. And uh, this gives it a whimsical play and creates a, an other world, worldly effect to it. Um, again, we have the beautiful skies, galaxies, the, the twirls of a Van Gogh starry night in here as well. This is one of the first pieces that I did uh, in this group. I call it the Avalon Corner Meltdown. And this is the corner where the Avalon Hotel is located. And it does look like it's melting. Uh, I love the whimsical nature of this from the uh, kids that are here in the street. Uh, you know, they're kind of ghosts that are here, but it definitely gives a, a bit of a, uh, a whimsical feel to it. And uh, of course, the uh, the building itself looks like something out of Dr. Seuss. Uh, even this hook of the flagpole that was up here uh, just adds adds to that that feeling. Uh, these are highly textured. Uh, there's a lot of texture in these to really um, add to a painterly effect. You'll see everything everything is highly textured in these uh, images. Again, we're capturing some of the life on South Beach, but it's in a it's in just an unusual feel as the people just are surreal. Moon Colony. Uh, this is the Colony Hotel, which everyone that's visited Miami Beach is aware of. This sign is one of the most iconic pieces of architecture on the uh, on Ocean Drive. And uh, I had to drop this moon in here to kind of make a reference to being on the moon, a, a colony on the moon, someplace out in space. I also like that we have the Starlight Hotel here, kind of also giving this sense of being in outer space or a space station or another world. Uh, but this, uh, again, it's a, a beautiful piece of architecture that I just felt compelled to kind of melt and, and break some of the start, the, the, the straight, rigid lines, the, the boxy geometry, and, and give it more of an organic feel to it, an organic sense of, of what it was, like, like it's a living piece of architecture. Uh, the people down here also have uh, their characteristics uh, modified similar to the other uh, images in the series, larger heads, uh, smaller bodies. And here we again have this star uh, twirling vaporous gases in the sky. And this is, this is one that I don't show very often. Uh, it's a smaller, uh, I've printed up smaller to fit in exhibits where I, where, uh, I need to have different sizes in there. And uh, this one is kind of like a, maybe a train wreck at the Clevelander. The Clevelanders got such a reputation as being a party site. Uh, there's so much energy and activity going on there that uh, I feel that the, the energy of this is not just melting. It's almost like it's alive itself. Uh, and as we see over here in this, in this detail that you've got the star that's pulling the water up, uh, indicating that, you know, there, this may be a life entity that's, that's here, uh, along with the human type, humanoid type people. Again, we have some distorted uh, human characters showing the changes in their forms and their figures. This was uh, this is a later piece. Uh, I, I've done this as kind of a uh, an addition to the collection. Uh, it, it's got a a little bit more of a crisper feel to it than some of the others, not quite as textured, bring in a lot of the stars in the sky and really push the, the liquid flow of the, of the architecture here. And including this, the car, I also allow this, this vehicle to take on so much more of a liquid form uh, 
that it really almost looks futuristic rather than antique. Again, we have the people with slightly uh, distorted facial fig features. And the uh, breakwater here, um, this hotel was uh, recently remodeled with the past couple of years. And um, they've done such a great job just bringing out the beauty of the Art Deco architecture, the colors, the neon lights. And uh, again, this was a quiet night, but you, you know, this, this image has such strong horizontal and vertical lines in, in its Art Deco design that I just had to, to break them up and liquefy them and, and create motion and, and organic uh, activity. Uh, everything from the sidewalk along the front here to the tower and the wings of, of the hotel. And I like the entranceway here. There's a person that uh, seems to be entering in, into the area. You don't see a lot of people, but there is some activity that uh, is going on in the bar in the back there. And uh, um, again, it's a quiet night, but it is, uh, there is activity, there is life, and certainly there's uh, a lot of activity and, and movement. And moving on to the last piece in my collection, uh, this one here is called the House of Cavalier. The hotel is the Cavalier. This also was recently renovated. Uh, it has beautiful architecture, beautiful lines, uh, such nice symmetrical uh, geometry to it that it, it had to be disrupted. And, and I think the disruptions still lend to its appreciation of its architecture, but giving it that organic feel. And again, the uh, certainly at the ground floor coming in here, these doors are certainly uh, very ornate, very uh, beautiful architecture in, in this in this hotel. And the the front of the hotel being a boutique hotel with just a few seats out here, um, really just is lovely with the blue tones the gold light around here, the, the purple off the, the buildings next to it. And again, we have some stars and some activity. And again, right here, we've got a pair of uh, eyes looking out in the form of stars to, uh, to unify this, this concept throughout the, the collection. So that's the, uh, that's the end of this group. Uh, this is the Oceana collection. It's uh, named after Ocean Drive and it's part of the Surreality uh, collection. And it's, you can see all of these on my website and order them uh, if you'd like to own them. I hope to see you again. Uh, I am broadcast, during Atlanta Celebrates Photography, I am broadcasting uh, twice a week on Wednesday and Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. You can tune into my YouTube channel and uh, I will be covering other portfolios that I have uh, available uh, as you kind of as you, if you want to explore some of my other works. I believe the next uh, presentation I'm doing is called Cuba Living Under the Shadow. This one has been very popular. I've previewed it before, but I have new prints to add to that collection, and I will go and and show more of those on uh, on uh, this weekend uh, Saturday at 3 p.m. I look forward to seeing everybody there, and I hope. Uh, you will join me throughout Atlanta Celebrates Photography for, uh, for new presentations, new artwork, and, and a great discussion. Thank you, and uh, have a wonderful day and, and a wonderful week. Stay safe, and uh, we'll see you around.